Aloha everyone, young and old, and thank you for watching our program today. Sparky would go, a Kauai talk show for the whole family. United States Senator Spark Matsunaga was born on October 8, 1916, and raised on Kauai, Hawaii. Born Masayuki Matsunaga, and the beloved Sparky nickname was given to him by his elementary school friends. Sparky liked the name so much, though, that he legally added it to his birth name after World War II. If we emphasize the life and works of our greatest contributors, people will come to realize that moral courage is bravery of the highest type, and America will be called the champion of peace. Sparky was a political visionary who dedicated his life to peace and a united world. This program series honors those people and organizations who are living examples of how to persevere through the hard times, showing us that our lives are worth living. All right. Hey, aloha everybody. My name is Mark Jeffers and uh, today we are going to do a very, very um, exciting oral history interview with our friend Bobby McCord Waterhouse. Is that how I say your name, Bobby? Barbara May Waterhouse McCord. Barbara May Waterhouse McCord. <laughs> Unless you're upset with me, then you call me Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it's Bobby. If you're mad at me, call me Barbara. Oh, okay. I get it. I get it. Okay. I, I don't think I'm going to get mad at you. Um, if I do, I'll probably just get up and walk because I, I don't express my anger to you. I too. know. I know. All right. I'm just being silly. Well, we're so fortunate to have Bobby with us today because she not only is a very um, um, revered kupuna here on our island, mm. someone who was born and raised here in Kauai, but her family is also born and raised here in Kauai. So we're talking about ancestors for Bobby that we'd like to bring up and talk about today. The interview, though, is going to start and focus on your world, Bobby, as a person growing up on Kauai and the fun and the excitement and the adventure of your life. So okay. we're not a game show. We're an oral history interview. <laughs> so okay. um, let's start. Um, tell us where you're from and uh, how did your family get to where you started out? Well, my family started out in Boston. They came here as medical missionaries in 1842, uh, Dr. and Mrs. Smith, and they landed on Kauai, and he was the only doctor for 40 years. They had nine children, and one of those nine children married my great-grandfather, Waterhouse. And the Waterhouses came from England, the Reverend John Thomas Waterhouse, and he and his wife and his family of nine children went to Tasmania. He was the only, he was, a, um, he was head of all the islands there, uh, Which was part Australia, of New Zealand at the time. Part of New Zealand, Australia, Tonga, all those mm -hmm. islands. And he was sent from the Methodist Church in London out there. So he was a, a missionary? No, he was sent as a... Um, oh, that's what I don't remember. Oh, uh, he was sent as a kind of an, uh, um, he a part of the protocol. Uh, for the oh, you're looking. He's your all right book. here. <laughs> now the nice thing about working oh. with Bobby is that she's her family is so well documented. This is um, all, yeah. And so she's looking to see how her Waterhouse family was um, oh, was connected geez. to um, oh, working geez. in the Pacific okay. and more than just Tasmania, right? Also uh, New Zealand and other islands. Oh yes, he was sent out, and I'll remember it in a minute. Mm -hmm. He was sent out as, as an the ambassador? first superintendent of all the churches 
the Reverend John, Tom, John Waterhouse was sent out to those islands. So as the yeah. missions were coming to the South Pacific, uh, John Waterhouse was a person who was in charge through the church of making sure that those churches were successful. Absolutely. Right. He landed on all the islands with his sons, too. There are so many stories about that. Right, right. And, um, Let's come back to that, Bobby. Now, the Waterhouse family married into the Smith family. Yes. And the Smith family was here first. And then you are the great-granddaughter of that union. Yes. And so where were you born? Well, I was born right here on Kauai at Eliele Hospital. My grandfather delivered us. So there were three generations of doctors. The Smiths, one of their sons was a doctor, and then um, my grandfather was the last. He was three uh, generations of doctors, of doctors on the Smith side of the family. And, and Waterhouse. The last one, and Waterhouse. The yeah. last one delivered you at Eliele right. Hospital. Right. And where is Eliele Hospital? Where was it? Well, in Eliele, <laughs> above right. Hanapepe, where the school is now. Ah. Yeah. So where the school, the school is, is that now. was also the infirmary or the hospital area. Yes. I and see. he was a plantation doctor, lived in Koloa, and after he retired, he added on a hospital to his house, which is now the missionary church. Oh. They tore it down a few years ago. That was a sad day. So were all the Smith Waterhouse doctors, the three generations of doctors, were they all um, like the first uh, Dr. Smith where they had to be the doctor for the whole island? Or did they yes. find the other doctors would come? And... For the whole island. Wow, for the that's whole so island. amazing. Koi has so much uh, that it owes yeah. to your family for taking care of people. They, sh they saw so many things through their eyes, oh. right? Uh, the condition of the, of the native people and the, and the early immigrants to the islands and, you know, all the different oh maladies my. and things that So many up. stories about right. them. Oh, my goodness. Are they going to make a movie about your family? Million. No, 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 <laughs> no. But there are so many stories. All right. Go back to your hospital, go back to being born mm -hmm. in Ellie Ellie. Now, where did your family live at that time? Well, Daddy went to uh, school here, born and raised here. His father brought him into the world. And he went uh, to Montezuma School for Boys during high school years. Then he went to SC and came back and worked on the plantation in Koloa. Mm -hmm. And then he asked his second cousin, uh, Lindsay Faya of Keikaha Sugar Company, if he could have a, a job on the plantation. And Lindsay said, of course, Bill. Sure, come work for us. So, so are you that's saying where that we each landed plantation has Kekaha. its own doctor, its own medical staff? Of well, not, not really. Yeah, not really, but there weren't many doctors sure. on Kauai. Right, and yeah. they took care of the community as well as the people on the plantation. Right? Oh, absolutely, right. yeah. So um, your family moved to Mana. I saw a beautiful picture of the manager's house in Mana. Is yeah. that where you uh, grew up there? That's where we grew up. Well, we started out in, in Keikaha. Right. And then... Uh, Daddy was moved to Mana right. as a so the plantation, overseer. The plantation in, in Mana, Kekaha Sugar, was how old at that time? Was it had been established as a regular plantation and was a strong company at that time. Oh, my gosh. And there are so many books written about that, too, mm -hmm. if you're really interested in how it all began. Right. Mm. So uh, your family was read. how big? Um, <gasps> Well, my dad had five girls, six girls. All he wanted was a boy. Yeah. So he trained <laughs> us all as boys in growing up. We rode horses and we dove 
uh, off of high towers in the reservoirs. He thought we could do gainers, you know, gainers. And yeah, he said, I've you can do gainers, it, you yeah. can do it. We cried a lot. Yeah. But he always paid us for it if we wow, did it. Wow, wow. We got money. So um, you grew up with five sisters. Yes. And you were the youngest, the oldest? The oldest. The oldest. Yeah. And so did that put you in the position of having to care for and instruct your younger sisters? No. No, not, not at all. Mm. My younger sister was, oh, brilliant. Went to Stanford. Um, from Waimea High School. Wow, that is big. She got in, yeah. Would you mind, just for our sake, naming your sisters? Well, Barbara May, Helen Sue, Leona Adele, Patricia and Priscilla, and Neva Ramona. Waterhouse, all Waterhouse girls. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like giving you an ovation. You know, that's quite, oh. a, quite a list. Well, the house we, we moved to, Mana, yeah. was 100 years old when Already? we first moved there. Wow. And then they renovated it just before Pearl Harbor. So Now, you were born in the early 1930s. 1931. 1931. That makes me old. Well... Yeah. Oh that my makes goodness. You old, but I'm old. old. You could say there's other words for old. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but 1930s now, that yeah. was the time in the United States when we were just either coming out of or still in the middle of the Great Depression, right? Yes. Now, yes. did that affect Hawaii? Were you being affected by that? The war affected. The war, that's the big time. And you were 10 years old already. Ten, nine, yeah. Nine. Um, so, but. Growing up and up until the war, did you have what would, what would you call a, a rough and ready, fun, adventuresome childhood? Oh. Did you guys, oh. you were telling me about Coquet. Did you go up to Coquet oh, when you Oh my younger? gosh, when daddy bought the house early on, mm. early 30s, um, oh, we spent a lot of time up there. And the guy that built it was a teacher at Waimea High School, and mm. he was going to retire up there. Ah. So he built this beautiful cabin, knotty pine wood, a yeah. great big, huge lava stone fireplace. And we did paint the outside coquet green, as it was known <laughs> in those days. Forest Everybody green, had yeah. coquet green. Yeah. And anyway, he was on the roof, and he fell off the roof, ah. and that was the end for him because mm -hmm. he couldn't drive up and down I see. anymore. So he sold it to my dad, and that was like in 1933. I yeah. see. And we've had it all these years. Wow. That's all so great. All these years, a long time. Yeah, no, families have... Yeah that have those cabins really have cared for them that long. Oh, yeah. Many, many stories. And so you know the mountains fairly well then. Did you ride horseback in the mountains? Oh, yeah. We, we rode our horses from Mana yeah. all the way up there. Oh, my gosh. Our Ocoles were How really did... <laughs> sore by the time How 6 o'clock came. Well, from 5 in the morning to about 6 at night. Wow. Yeah. So was there a gravel road uh, at that time or just a horse path? Well, or? I remember a gravel road Yeah. since the time I was born. Right, right, right. Yeah, and we had stables up there, and uh -huh. we had a, uh, oh, yeah, connected on to the house. Was the Camp Sloggett there at that time? Oh, way before us, yes. Yeah. And so, um, uh, and were you able to go up to Kalalao Lookout and oh, Pukila? Yes. And, yeah, yeah. No tourists in those days. We had the whole place to yeah. ourselves. And were there ditchmen living in the ditchmen's houses along Camp Ten Road there? Oh, just one ditchman. Fires. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Oh, there's a long story about that. But I would have to look that part of my life. Up. And was your family hunters or did you make lay oh, or were yes. you, did you love the woods that were Oh, there? daddy had workmen come up from the plantation and they slept on our porch and then they'd go pig hunting yeah. the next day and they'd bring pigs home and put 
them up, they buy a rope, they'd hang upside down as they bled the pigs. Right. It made it right. better you have for to the be pigs. Very careful when you're butchering a pig, yeah. And, well, it was to let the blood out. It made them better to eat. I don't sure. know. I don't know, but I just remember those pigs hanging up. From yes, and and they brought the ho they brought all the dogs too. What was your favorite flower or favorite fruit in croquet? Do you remember? Oh, plums. Plums, yeah. And nasturtiums. Yes. We had bouquets all over the house. Yeah, and nasturtiums, calla lilies. Yeah. Oh, all kinds of. My mother had beautiful gardens up right, there. Right, right. In right, the back right, of the right. house, roses. Yeah. yeah, flower gardens. Everybody brought oh, their favorite flowers, yeah. right? Oh, to croquet. yes. And the fun time being with each other for dinner and whatnot. Right. A lot of Oahu people bought houses up there. Yes. And their kids, so we got to know their kids when they'd come up for the summers. All right, too. I'm going to turn the corner now. What about the beach? If you live in oh, Keika and Mana, you had access oh to one of gosh. the most beautiful beaches oh. in the world, right? Well, a lot of our summer was spent in Koloa with my grandparents right. and my aunt and, aunt and uncles. And we just lived there all summer. Were you a surfer, Bobby? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> There's a picture of me with my eight-foot board. board. But I didn't surf until many years later. Right, right. But we, we did not board surf. Uh -huh. You hardly saw any boards. In fact, you never saw any boards. So you were body surfing? Body surfing. Right. And Brennecke's Beach was yeah. the hangout. Mm -hmm. for all the kids that came during the summer. Mm -hmm. And most of my cousins brought house guests. So there was about 75 kids on this <laughs> island. <laughs> you could start your own school probably there. And were there adventures that you would all go on? Would you go to Mahaolepu? Would you go to um, uh, explore areas there? Um, and another question. Did you ever get scoldings for some of your adventures? Well, uh, Dr. Brennecke's house was right there at Brennecke's Beach, and we used to go sit on his porch and use his water, <laughs> turn on his water, and we would get scolded <laughs> for being there. He was never there, but that's where we picnicked a lot. I see. Because that was the hangout was Brennecke's Beach. Now, Brennecke is also famous in Coquet. Didn't he bring one of his cabins up? In no, Coquet but he to... built a house right next to where we, my dad bought his first little house. Oh, I see. It had a living room and a kitchen and then an outhouse. But they were always going to add on to it, mm -hmm. except, thank God, because we were on, the, we were on a high cliff. Oh, my gosh. I remember that, the place, the location of that Brennecke's house, and they moved it up to, it became the mm -hmm. uh, Waineke cabin. Uh, it's part of the Waineke camp, I believe. Well, we were cabin. right next to it. In fact, when you went in the driveway, you saw our little house with the outhouse, and then you drove here, and that, there was Brennecke's. So you were very close with the people that you grew up with. Who were some of your oh, playmates, yes. Bobby? Oh, my Who were your favorite playmates? I mean, my of course, your cousins. sisters. Right? Your cousins. Oh, more so than my sisters. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, they sure. had each other. Tell me something <laughs> you played with. What did you play my with? My dollhouse. My dad built me a three-room playhouse with running water in the kitchen. and. <laughs> Oh, I love a play that house place. A with play house. water in the kitchen. Yeah, I had a real kitchen, living room. Wow. And a bedroom. Yeah. Originally, it was a doghouse when we lived in Keikaha. Mm. And then when we moved to Mana, he moved the doghouse and then added on three more rooms. To become a playhouse. Playhouse for me. So you could actually go in the playhouse oh, yes. and play, and your cousins could come in there. And oh, yeah. And it was a place of uh, privacy. And oh, yes. uh, so did you have dolls? Did you have dress-up clothes? Oh, I wish. There was no place on Kauai to buy anything. Uh -huh. We went to Cresses once a year to buy our paper dolls and our hair ribbons. Now, that was a big treat once a year. 
<laughs> Peak tree. Yeah. People made our clothes. Yeah, sure. We couldn't even buy clothes. All our clothes were handmade. And did, you have, a, did you have a favorite toy that you like to play with? Um, you know, when I talked to oh. some of the old timers here in Hanapepe, they talked about strapping oh. cans on their feet um, and clunking down the street. They talk about marbles. Oh. And they talked about, uh, of course, baseball. That was the big thing for them, you know, back in the days, right? Yes. Did you play some of those things? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But our summers, we looked forward to our summers mm -hmm. because the rest of the time we were in school the whole time. What did you like to learn in school? What was your favorite thing to learn? Mm. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, nothing. Art, yeah. art, 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 art. So, draw. Um, I love to draw. Oh, really? Oh, I drew and all the And was time. there an art teacher in your school? No, we didn't. No. Oh, this is Ali Ali School. No, we oh. went to Mana School. Mana school. school. There was a school, an elementary school in Mana. Now, I didn't even know that. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, all during the war years. Was it, was it like a one-room schoolhouse with one teacher and one class? Or was it several teachers and several classes? Two teachers and one taught first, sixth, seventh, and eighth, and the other, and well, yeah, one taught fifth and sixth, and the other taught the principal taught seventh and eighth. Wow, Mr. Tsuchia, Tsuchia. was our teacher. Oh, yeah, and, I wonder if they're related. And he ended up at Waimeo being the principal of Waimeo High School. Wow, and that's when yeah. Did you have any neat how children there? No, mm -hmm. no, all uh, mana camp uh -huh. kids. Right. So, um, okay, so now um, you're growing up, you're having a great time uh, as a young girl with a big family. And um, what about the, your mother and father? Were they, uh, your father was a doctor? No. Your father no. worked at the plantation? No. His father was at the doctor. Right. I'm sorry. And, um, well, after uh, he got the job with his cousin, right. he was, um, <laughs> oh, a division overseer for the, for the Keikaha Sugar Company. Wow. So he was the administrator. Oh, sometime. yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, he was sent to Mana to, and he ran all of Mana. So the operations, running the operations. Oh, yes. So long days, and he oh, would come my home gosh. Uh, after a long day, and then would he play with you girls, or would he just go in and read the paper? He or said, what have routine? you had your bath yet? And we, <laughs> if we didn't have our bath by 4 o'clock, <laughs> we got lit into. And yeah. bath water was outside. We um, stoked the fire, and it made hot water. Like in a hot water collar? Yes, I yeah. See. So, oh, yeah, I remember those days. Yeah, and then your mother, she was a homemaker? She taught school for 35 years. Keikaha, wow. Mana, until it closed. Then she went to Keikaha, and then she taught at one male. She taught first, second, third, and fourth grades. And six girls, and also raised a husband. So, um, besides that being very miraculous, <laughs> um, what kind of chores did you girls have? Oh my gosh, we didn't really have chores. We had wonderful friends that cleaned our house, like Yoshiko did all the laundry. Okay. And, um, oh, so many wonderful people. So people were, um, domestic people were came, domestic, uh, yes. preparing your meals and, and your laundry and stuff like that. Oh, yes. So, um, oh, yes. But you had things that you had to maintain. You had to take care of certain things. What we about had to animals? clean our rooms and what we had to animals? study. Oh, animals came after we came back from the war. Ah, I see. I think we're going right into the war days. Tell me what oh, happened. How did you learn about the war, Bobby? Oh. And how did your family react to the war? Oh, my gosh. Pearl Harbor, December 7th. We had no idea what was going on, but something big was happening in our skies and radios. And, oh, it was awful. But Just cacophony of uh, yeah. stuff over the radio, planes in the sky. 
everything. People talking, right? There was a buzz, oh, a buzz, 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 right? There was. So Daddy got us tickets to go on the Aquitania, get us off the island and go to San Francisco. So that's, we had to be ready within 24 hours to get on the ship. So he sent mother, expecting her sixth child, to Oahu and we stayed with friends and we had to be ready within 24 hours to get on the ship. So there was a, a plan that you had yes, we got that said that you felt as though if the Japanese were on their way, then you didn't want to be part of what was going to happen. The here. men stayed home. The women had to go. Oh, so all of us kids went and grandmas and grandpas and oh yeah, we just all left. So uh, you all picked it up except for the men, and you moved to San Francisco. Well, he, uh, we landed in San landed, Francisco. I'm sorry, landed in yeah. San Francisco. We were with a convoy because we were Safety. afraid the, you right. know, the under, they were going to... Submarines and stuff. Uh, yeah. And um, we landed in San Francisco. And we stayed with an aunt. My mother had an aunt and uncle there that lived on Market and Twin Peaks. We stayed there for about a month. Then we went to Los Angeles, and mother found a little house there. Now, this is you and your sisters and, my and your mother, mother. Five kids, expecting her six, went to, she rented a little house. It had a Murphy bed in the living room, and it was one bedroom. And that's where we stayed until relatives in Pasadena said, oh, no, Genevieve, you've got to come to Pasadena, which mm -hmm. we did. We, we went to Pasadena. And that's where your mother, uh, mother had her child? Yes. We lived on North Manor Avenue. And uh, my grandmother was there. She came on the ship with us, of course, mm -hmm. Nana. And she helped take care of us. And her sister lived right down the street, Bessie Scoville. And she helped take care of all of us. Were you in school in Pasadena? Well, what they did was they sent me to a girls' school in Glendora, the Brown School for Girls. And that's where I went and loved it. Oh, you loved it. Oh, what did you I love loved about it? it. What did Ms. you love White about it? Miss White taught me piano lessons. Piano. And Yes, and we had, oh, I just love that school. We had uniforms, and I got on the baseball team all year round. Yeah. That's when I was And probably so proud. had art classes. Everything. <laughs> yeah. Everything. That's yeah. great. That means that you spent your war days sort of like mm -hmm. safe and with family. Mm -hmm. And then how old were you at that time? About 11. We were only there for two years. Mm -hmm. Then we came home. I see. And when we came home, Daddy had all these animals for us <laughs> to take care of. What kind of animals? Okay. I had eight pens of uh, females, and I had two pens of males, and then we had one huge pen where all the babies were kept. Now, what kind of creature is this you're talking about? Rabbits. Wabbits. Wabbits. <laughs> And I had to feed them, so I grew alfalfa. This is all through our high school years. Yeah, 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 yeah. I fed them. My sister had the chickens. She had pens of chickens where she had to feed the chickens mash, yeah. get the eggs to see there were no red spots, sand mm -hmm. them, and then bring the eggs in the house. And I was going to ask you, did, were you able to use the the chickens for their products? What about the rabbits? Did you uh, slaughter them and oh, eat them? Oh, my goodness. I never knew that. But we had rabbit every Friday for dinner. I oh. never knew that. You never knew it? I never knew. You never asked? I didn't know to ask. I had <laughs> no idea they were going to. We had I'm rabbit sorry, I'm for laughing. Dinner. This is not a funny I know. Thing. No, I really never realize that. We moved back to Mana uh -huh. and we were only there two years and there was what two and a half more years, three years more of the war. Of the war. So you lived in Mana during the war days but there wasn't 
as much fear as Japanese, from Japanese invasion or? No, we still had our um, lights out at night uh -huh. and um, our bomb shelters dug right. Right. to run to. But anyway, we had our high school years when we came back. I see. And, and you're right, the war was more towards um, the Japan yeah, the West, rather yeah. than towards Hawaii, so right. it was more normal. Right. Just a side note, were you uh, aware of that incident that happened when the Japanese plane landed on Niihau? <gasps> had no idea, but read about <laughs> it a lot afterwards. That was an exciting story, actually. Oh, that was. So, um, and question, uh, did you know people from Niihau? Were you aware of Niihau people being a neighbor island? Well, we grew up with the Robinson boys and girls. We uh -huh. grew up with Warren and Russell Robinson. They were part of the gang. Right. And the parties, I forgot to tell you about the parties we had. Okay. Uh, Hector and Sandy Moyer, uh -huh. who got married, their father and mother, the Knutsons, built them their house. Oh, all in Koloa, okay. all of lava rock. Wow. And yes, and they had one son, Iki. And Iki was part of the gang uh, during our summer months staying in Koloa, ah. part of the beach gang and everything. And there were a lot of kids that knew, played ukuleles and guitars and. When did you get together? When you went to church and uh, church no, no, or no. at the beach uh, or when did you get together? Every day, every day, every day at the beach during the summer, <laughs> every day at the beach for like a month. Coke one month, uh, uh, Koloa for like two months. Oh, oh yeah, see. every day. Some of us worked in the cannery. Mm -hmm. My cousins, my girl cousins and I worked in the cannery. Now that would be the Lawai cannery. The Lawai cannery. And they grew pineapple somewhere in that neighborhood, somewhere. I'm oh, not sure all exactly. over the mountains. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But so, we could hardly wait to get back to the beach to swim. And then we, oh, we had so much why fun. Why did you choose to work in the cannery? Well, we were trying to earn money. Oh. A lot of money, because my dad said, you're not going back to the mainland on the ship that all the college kids go back on <laughs> September 2nd, uh -huh. the Lurling. You're not going with the college kids. Why not? It was a college party. Oh, too much party. And he had two girls to worry about, you right, know. Right, right, right. And Sue and I said, oh, yes, we are. Mm -hmm. So we spent... Saturdays all through our high school years working at the Garden Island for um, oh my the Garden Island newspaper. Newspaper okay. for Charlie Fern. Okay. Oh boy. He was a poet. Every sure. Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. And Sue wrote a column for the for the paper. In fact, a lot of columns. But anyway, th we paid our own way on that ship. So we you were going, we, you we were, were going planning to go, to go to the that mainland, and, and that was a, a school trip after high school? And this was going away to college. Going away to college. I went to a girls' school in New York, upstate New York. Take it back to when you played with uh, the Robinsons and the Knutsons, and you were, telling Every me summer. A, you were telling me a story where you had a race. Tell us that story again where you were racing the... I, I didn't really... Oh, that really, was horse racing the county horse fair. Horse racing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And you had a good horse and oh, a good... we uh, had two good horses. Plantation good horses. Yeah. yeah. And you were the winners always. You were the fast well, ones. You were the ones to beat. We, the, the Knuts and girls, raced with us. Mm -hmm. And we'd beat them. Ah. Sue would come in first. I'd come in second. Yeah. <laughs> Betsy Knutson. Yeah. I've teased her about that many times, <laughs> years later. Yeah, what happened to your horse? Why was yeah. it so slow? You know? <laughs> the fancy boots and the clothes, and oh, we, look, yeah. oh, we look like mag ragamuffins next to them. Yeah. But we always beat them. What was your secret? What was the secret in winning? Daddy Chate training us. Oh, okay. From Mana to Keka, racing us in his car, and we would race, <laughs> yeah. But I have to tell you about um, Sandy and Sector, 
Hector Moyer's son. Okay. Sandy and Hector gave a party every summer for all of us kids that were on Kauai, uh, the gang at the Brennicky speech. Ah. And she would say, okay, you can come. And it was, I've got pictures of it and I'm gonna show them to you. Mm -hmm. uh, there were like 75 of us kids. <laughs> Most of them were my cousins and they brought house guests. Sure. They always had house guests sure. that they'd bring from the mainland. Well, what would you do with Oahu. 75 children? I mean, gosh, well, that's, a, that's a whole school. One party. Well, Brennicky's Beach held them all too. Uh -huh. But anyway, uh, you have to wear shoes, number one, no barefoot, and you have to dress up. Wow. So we planned a year ahead of time, what are we gonna wear to Sandy and Hector? Oh, party. oh that was okay. the big thing, four years of high school. And what did you do at the party that made it so fun? <gasps> You'll see pi pictures of it. We all sat on the ground, luau style, yep. Good oh, food, oh, and did you have games oh, that you played? Oh, yes, and mm -hmm. oh, yes. And Sandy and Hector were always there with all of us kids mingling uh -huh. around, and they were, oh, we just dearly loved them. What a great memory. And Hector, of course, we sang a lot. Mm -hmm. All of us played instruments, we sang a lot. Were you singing Hawaiian music? Oh, mostly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, mostly. A favorite tune? Yes. What is your favorite tune? Ah, uh, oh my gosh. And I always ask somebody to play it when we go away, but they don't remember them. When you go out for dinners, yeah. like at Kiyoki's. Right. Which, could you play going <laughs> yeah. to Hukilao or something like that? No, no. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, I mean, I mean, you think yeah. about Hawaii. Real Hawaiian songs. Yeah, you think about Hawaii in the 1920s and 30s, and it was very, very... Uh, oh. Uh, you know, music and mahi uh, beamers. Very, yeah, oh, there were very oh, well lots oh, of stuff going oh, on with the cultural it was, renaissance, right? It was. It was Hollywood, even, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, all right. Now, so take us back to high school. You graduated from high school when? 1950. 1950. Five zero. And Sue and I paid our own ways on the on the Matson ship. Right. And you were. We going got to, to San college. Francisco. San Francisco. Yes, yeah, stayed. This was a big adventure now, because you were on your own. Yeah, that's right. Uh, relatives met us in San Francisco, uh -huh. and then Sue went on to uh, Stanford, and I went on to New York, where relatives met me. Daddy made sure you get relatives to New York? Was that a train? met me. That was a train you were on? No, I think I flew. Flew, wow. That was I'm pretty sure, I can't remember. That was... A hundred years ago, you know. Yeah, I heard that was a long that. time yeah. ago. Yeah. So you but got anyway. to New York. What part of New York? <clears throat> uh, Briarcliff is in Westchester County. Mm -hmm. Is it by the lakes or up by uh, no, it's, Albany? Yeah, it's yeah, it's just it's on the Hudson River. Oh, okay. So it's on the other side. It's on the other the side. I see. Yeah. And the yeah. college that you went to was Briarcliff, uh, Edgewood Park in Briarcliff. What made you choose that college? Well, my cousin went there first from Punahou. Ah, there we go. Yeah. And you were looking forward to studying and meeting gentlemen? No, I, no, I had no idea I was going to meet anybody. I mean, this is a girls' school. <laughs> yeah. But Paul Townsley from Kauai Electric, his father was Kauai Electric, mm -hmm. he went to um, a school uh, the, a maritime academy on Long Island. Wow. That was a boys' school. He got me dates at his school. I got him dates at my school. <laughs> so we had a wonderful time. <laughs> yeah. So this we is did. A prelude to yeah. online dating, pretty, right? That's oh, right. That's pretty radical. That's, right. that's beautiful. That's yeah, great. Paul and so you his were son went, went there too from Kauai. They all grew up on Kauai. So you were there for two, three, four years? Two. Two years, Two. and you graduated from there? Yep, I did, in merchandising. Merchandising, yep. you were going to, what was your vision there? You were gonna become a? Merchandiser, I was gonna have a store and sell like things, a buyer for like a store. my great-great-grandfather had in Honolulu mm -hmm. from Tasmania, he came for his health. 
uh, and sailed to Hawaii with his family mm -hmm. and his ninth child or fifth, fifth child was born on the way to Hawaii was conceived born in Hawaii that's my great great grandfather and what merchandise store were they involved in John Thomas Waterhouse had a big merchandise store oh, in okay. on Oahu okay the only one, in fact. Wow, back in those days, too. It was yeah. very well thought of. To very have a... well thought. In fact, all Kukialona Park has one of his uh, deers that he brought. He used to sail to London, England a lot, bring back stuff I on remember ships. that deer. I know that deer. Yeah, in and there's a plaque underneath that says, uh, anyway. Yeah. Donated yeah. to Kukuyola. And we had lions in our house. In fact, my dad took one of the lions to Mana mm. when he uh, made a park out of it. A park in he Mana? Had a mod he had a park. He had tennis courts. He had a, a band. The Filipino guys had a band, and they'd play on weekends. Did they have a name for this band? Yeah, but I don't remember it, but they were good. <laughs> My dad, and then built a swimming pool for the mana. I think that's all that's left of the swimming pool in mana. I see. I see. Yeah. Wow. But we he think... did a lot for that oh, community. Oh no! What you talking And he about also is said, "Okay, you guys, I'm giving you a prize at the end of the year. You plant flowers, plant whatever you want around your houses, and we'll give you a big prize." Which that was. A big thing for the community. Sure. Competition, yeah. Oh, yeah. sure. And plus, every culture has their favorite flowers. That's right. right? That's it's gonna right. Bring you, that's what happened in Coquet. Everybody bought their favorite flowers, and oh. some of them turned into weeds, and some of them turned into classical Coquet flowers, like calamari. Nasturtiums, nasturtiums were wild all over Coquet. We have some beautiful footage of Mr. Boynton drinking the water drop on the nasturtium. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. It's oh. really nice. We had flowers all over the house. Yeah. Oh. Let's take a turn here. Let's okay. go to um, uh, Kenneth. Where did you meet your first husband? And how okay. did that turn and blossom into your family? Well, one of the, um, my friends at school was from Hawaii, uh, went to Punahou, and she went to West Point, and there was a guy up there that she wanted me to meet. So <laughs> I went up there as a blind date. West Point and, from yeah. New York is... Poughkeepsie. It's right up okay. the Hudson yeah, River. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was going to say. It, it's really close. It's not too far from our school mm -hmm. on the Hudson River. Right. Yeah. So I met him, and we fell madly in love the first time. Wow. And a year later, he... Uh, no, I met him in September. He gave me a ring in December, and then we were married the next June. 1951. One. 1952. 52. So you were 20 years old? 19? Yeah, ago? 20. Yeah. Wow, that's romantic. You fell in love it right was. away. Oh, you yes. You knew right away. Oh, yes. I oh knew it right, right away. Okay. And he was, where was he in school at that time? Was he finished or? He was a senior. Senior. Yeah. Okay. So it worked out. So you were both really young well. and in love. And what did yes. you decide to do? Well, I knew I was going to be a military wife oh, for the rest yeah. of my life. Uh, that's right. And I agreed upon it. But later on, he realized that we needed to move back to Hawaii and become normal. Mm -hmm. We moved 16 times in 11 years. Holy smokes. I mean, yes, 16 times in 11 years. Well, where were some of the places you moved? Fort Campbell, Kentucky, Fort Bannon, Georgia. But you picked up the accent too, um, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, we moved to Japan. We built a house in Japan, oh in Kumamoto, gosh. because we were too low on the podium pole so to have housing I at see. Camp Wood. So we built a house there with another classmate, the Malones. Um, oh, that was a fun project. Wow. And for... Uh, 
I mean, they were so poor there. This was right after the war. And so houses where you could give them a month's rent and they, they would build a wow. big house for you. What a world. So we lived there for about a year and then we were able to move on the base. And in fact, we closed the base. We what were the, the last name of ones that base? to close. Camp Wood in Camp Kumamoto. Wood. Kumamoto. And uh, the Yakata dolls are famous there oh. in oh, Kumamoto. Do you have one? Oh, I had many. <laughs> yes. And from there, you now, w were you making children at this time? Did you have children with you? I had one that went there. She was a year old when we landed there, and we had a, her first birthday there. Okay, the last one was born in Pasadena. The Huntington Memorial, Lori was born in Pasadena. The Huntington Memorial, where my dad's sister was born. Oh my gosh. My grandfather brought in my father, but when it came time to have the second child, my grandmother says, oh, Herbert, I'm going back to Pasadena to have this child. And that child was born in the same hospital that Lori was born in. Oh, God. And she never forgave her mother for having been born in Pasadena instead of Hawaii. Oh, okay. Of course, the last child was born on Kauai. That I was know. mine. There were three kids. And where did you live when you were living here back on Kauai? Oh, okay. Yes, we had a tour here. Oh, great. We had a tour here. He, on Oahu. On Oahu. He was head of ROTC at the University of Hawaii along with other um, classmates and people, uh, there was a lot of us there. And it was a wonderful group of people. Well, we bought a house, because there was no housing for us. So we bought a house out in Eva Beach. In Eva Beach. When it first started, there was nothing out there except Eva Beach Plantation. And we had a lot of friends at so that plantation. Cane, right? yeah, yeah, sugar cane. So we built our, bought our first little house there. Great. For $25,000. Uh -huh. and, and then that was close by the beach there where those older horses Eva houses Beach. Are, well, yeah. it was the first. There was nothing out there. Right. Yeah, it was the first. Barber's one. Point and then Eva right. Beach. Right. And Barber's Point is where we, we, we were connected to a lot of that. We did our surfing out there, our commissary was there, sure. everything was there. That's where, yeah. My mother was actually stationed there at Barber's Point oh, during the war days. Yeah. Oh she my, was in the Navy. Oh my God. Tell me this, uh, how did, this is an amazing story in itself, is how did your husband choose to go and serve in Vietnam? Well, we'd been there four years and he felt Beach. this is not fair, this is not right. And um, our president at the time said, it's not what you can do for your country. No, it's not what your country can do for you. It's what you can do for the country. And he thought about that. He's written me about that. I've got all these letters. And he said, it's really time for me to go and do something. You know, I've been here. So he saw his years. life in the military as being truly, sincerely a military person. A West not, Pointer. Yeah, you not bet. just to yep. teach in ROTC oh, yeah. or to be stationed here and or there, that was wonderful. but to be in a military situation. He said it was time for me to How go. How did you feel about that? You're going to go again? He went to Korea for six months and, you know, he, and a lot of his work was bivouacking. Never saw him, you know. Right. And so... Um, well, I was upset at first because I thought, oh my gosh, how long, you know. But when he told me, it's really, this is very important right now. They need us. They, the people need us, and mm -hmm. I've got to go. And that sounds like a very dedicated person. Oh, oh, he was. He, he was. In fact, they gave him an award and named a building after him. Uh, because he redid the whole system at the University of Hawaii. Wow. And then he'd take, during the summer months, he'd take uh, his team 
to Washington, and uh, there's a place there where they all practiced and whatnot. It was very important anyway. But we had wonderful times with all the people that we knew. Some of them were classmates. Mm -hmm. So we had wonderful times uh, together. And, of course, I cut everything out of the newspapers. My <laughs> scrapbooks are full of, yeah. of things we well, did. Well, and like I say, that's how movie scripts get written, is somebody has great collections of <laughs> uh, scrapbooks. Now, uh, Kenneth passed away in Vietnam. Yes. And that must have been a real shock to you. Oh, my gosh. Well, the papers were full of it. And I got a lot of awards. And there were a number of generals there at that time on their way to Vietnam. Yeah, because early 60s. And that's 60s, all right? in print and, and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. But I, I was just totally out of it. Totally yeah, out of it. Yeah, what could you do? I mean, it's mm -hmm. just something that happened, and it was his choice. And right. We, came through it with your family yeah. and uh, survived. And you were living on Oahu still in Eva Beach at that time. Right, right, yes, yeah. And at some point you decided to come back to Kauai? No, I sold the house and moved to where his folks lived oh, in San okay. Marino. Okay. His folks were so broken up, I mean, you know. And I moved there and he, he grew up Everybody he grew up with lived in San Marino. And most of the kids uh, left and went down to the beach, to Newport Beach, and live. And his friends introduced me to my second husband. Oh. His best friends. So yes. There go. That's how I met my second husband. And so there was something magical about that? Oh, yes, absolutely. And yes. I was married for 14 years the second time. 11 the first time, 14 the second time. And he was a good father to your children? Oh, wonderful. He was a teacher at Horace Anson School in Newport, Port Beach. It's the only 7th and 8th grade school in the area. So everybody went through Horace Anson. Everybody knew Tell Mr. His name. Stillwell. Mr. Stillwell. He grew okay. up in the Salvation Army uh -huh. with six uh, kids, boys, yeah. most of them. <laughs> they were so poor. <laughs> you know, Salvation Army, they were dedicated. To, yes. They're beautiful Christians. Right. Dedicated. Yes. And half of his relatives were here on Oahu and Kauai. I mean, in they the were... In the Salvation Army? The Salvation Army, Oh, my yeah. God. In fact, um, his brother's wife ran the Salvation Army uh, in, in on Oahu. It's the, it was a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a long story about that. Yeah. yeah. Well, Salvation Army people are on a mission oh. from God. Oh, and, uh, my gosh. When they're on duty, on oh. call, they really get things done. Oh. And uh, so I can really admire that. So that you must have seen that in oh, Mr. Stillwell, in right? everything they did, yeah. Right. His brother, one of the boys, was led the Salvation Army band in the... Uh, in the Rose Parade for 40 years, for 40 <laughs> years. <laughs> what a claim to fame, but, yeah. in the Rose Parade. In yeah. The, oh, yeah. All of his boys were football ball players and everybody. So were you swept them. away into the Salvation Army world as well? No, we went to our own churches I see. Uh, where, where, where we lived. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so you stayed in California until... until um, you were finished Well, there. how did your... What happened was he was to retire after 30 years of teaching at Horace Ensign. Uh -huh. And we were lucky enough, the family was trying to get us back home. Yeah. And we said, we're coming when we retired. And so, so that was I the was... plan. He wanted to bring the family back here to... Us, yeah. Your children yeah. were such a big part of your life. Oh, and yes. um, <laughs> tell me their names again. Their names are Leona. Leona. She ended up as a, um, an American Airlines flight attendant for 37 years. She just retired <laughs> well, and she is so happy. She got a few so travel happy. benefits from that. Yeah. Right? 
And then there's Chuck. Chuck. And Chuck, he lives in Virginia. He's with the FBI. Oh. And then there's Laurie. Laurie. Who lives on Kauai. Leona, Chuck, Chuck and, and Laurie. Laurie. My and, baby. And Leona is a connection with Esther Williams. And yes. Chuck is the FBI who lives on the East Coast. Uh, and does he come back and visit you? Oh, all the time. Oh, oh good. yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Your, your guys' family has to be oh, together gosh, totally he all comes the time, back. right? Yeah. Connected to the movie that was filmed here with Esther Williams. Did you ever know about that film? Mm, no, I don't. Tell me about that film. Okay. A movie was filmed here. My sister and I tried to try out for it, but we would, but we didn't have enough suntan yet, so oh, we were okay, kicked out. I get it. But we met Esther Williams and uh, their son, uh, which was just born, their first child that was ju just born. Anyway, to make a long story short, <laughs> my oldest daughter went to UOP where she met Esther Williams' daughter. And both of them were anti-joining sororities. Oh. They became the best of friends, at which they are today, the best of friends. So needless to say, we got a lot of seeing um, Esther Williams. She wow. swam in our pool. I've got pictures of her with That's Lori. That's fascinating, and, yeah. And it was. And What was the name of the film she was um, recording here? Oh, my gosh. Pagan, Pagan Love Song. Oh, Pagan Love Pagan Song. Pagan Love Song. Pagan Love Song. Oh, yeah. I now, is that, that. Yeah. interesting? Yeah. What a world. So um, you and your family had planned to come back here to Kauai oh, when you retired. Oh, that's right. I have to get back to that. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I was here. I had John drawn my plans. I knew where I was going to build this wonderful house. And I was staying with my grandmother at the time, and um, an uncle answered the phone and said to me, Bobby, your husband died. He died in his sleep at home. Wow. And what happened was, he didn't show up for school, oh, and this was teaching. May Day, May yeah, Day, yeah, yeah, and yeah. he was to retire like in two weeks. So they went to our house, knocked on the door, and found him uh, lying on the side of the bed. Wow! So they told me, and of course I went right home. And, and what a sad, it sad, was just horrible. Sad it was story. just horrible. Yeah, that's really sad. Eleven, fourteen years. Yeah. Yeah. So. Anyway, a year later, my first husband's, her dad's friends introduced me to Bill. Bill had lost his wife, and she went over to his house that lived across the street mm -hmm. and said, can I invite my friend to have dinner with us? Uh -huh. And his kids said, yeah. <laughs> and so... <laughs> <laughs> Went to dinner there, and that was a year later we got married again. I love how you just, you bounce back. Talk about <laughs> resilience. And you... you I cried you, a lot, though. I'll oh, tell you. no, no. I, I so, know, totally I understand that. What, a, what an amazing story. Later. But at yeah. the same time, you know, you're open to life and of changing course. and what's coming into your life. They're that's up so important. there. They're up there looking down. Yeah, down that's so eyes. important, too. Anyway. So with Bill, um, you finished your house. 41 years I've been married to Bill. 41 years. And you built a house. Yes, we built many houses. Okay, many houses. There we go. We lost a lot of them in the hurricane. So ah. we built a lot of our houses here on Kauai. And was that the fun thing that you were doing with your life at that time? Well, yeah, because he was totally retired. And when my uncle said, hey, you got to come over here, you guys. We've lost everything in the hurricane. Mm -hmm. And we said, yeah, we're coming over here, but we're sailing in the Nationals first, and then we're going to Huntington Lake camping and fishing with our friends, and then we're going to be there. That'll be two weeks from now. And Uncle Bob says, oh, no, you're not. you got to come right now. Mm. So we, oh, he was desperate. We lost everything here. Which hurricane was that? The first one. 
One of our little houses Eva. on the beach was 130 years old. I had heard. It came around the horn, and it was in the water for months. So the wood had no termites. So sure. that's the beach house we grew up in, right. knowing about. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right. And so anyway, uh, we came over here, and Bill and I, from the ground up, built all those houses twice. You must have felt like some kind of pioneer person, again, recapturing your, your life that you had lost, that you had traveled away from and then come back to. You must have felt like sort of a pioneer spirit is what I'm trying to say. We were so happy to be back here, yeah. both of us. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it was heaven on earth. And the fact that he was retired. Well, you and, can tell oh, that you really love Kauai. And I've got all the pictures from the very beginning, loading all the containers on the mainland and bringing them over here because there was nothing left here. Well, I love the, um, the picture that um, you've let us use for this um, for this interview where you're sitting in front of your collection of <laughs> albums and oh. and photo albums and all these things, you know, and he's going, oh my gosh, you know, talk about a movie script. I think there's five movie scripts in this. Um, Bobby, oh. let's turn a corner now. Um, I feel compelled to to go into your uh, your family's history here. And I feel as though you know so much about your family's history. And if you could take us back to uh, Dr. Smith and, and the Waterhouse-Smith connection and those times when they were the doctors oh, and the medical um, expertise on the island during those days. Um, uh, could you s just start briefly and tell us about how they chose to come here and then what they experienced uh, with living in Hawaii during the mid-1800s, right? Yes, and, and the uh, overthrow of Queen Liliokalani. That was part of your family, oh, W.O. Yes. Smith. Part of, uh, he was one of the PG people, right? He was Thurston. Uh, um, Dole. Dole and James Smith, they were the three boys that grew up together on Kauai. Oh, I see. And they had to do something. England wanted Hawaii. Russia wanted Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Of course, Japan almost got Hawaii. Right. But, oh yeah, they were avid that um, we're, we're going to be did part they feel, of the USA. Do you know, did they feel as though they had to remove the queen in order for that to happen? Oh, you have to read the book. It all in detail. I it's see. It's all in detail. Sure, sure, I understand. So they were involved in politics, but primarily their, your, the work of the Smith family was in healing people. And uh, they were part that's, of the times oh, when, I mean, if you're before 1850, that's whaling time. That's, right? That's, so, oh. and the whaling ships landed in Koloa. Oh, with a lot of other people that came from all over the world, and they did, they had no use for anybody but just to get drunk, be with the girls. Uh, uh, no, it so was, it was a, a whole culture that was coming here, yeah. That came here before the missionaries came, 40 long years. And they brought disease and oh, they brought a culture with everything. them that everything. helped to destroy the native everything. culture, the Hawaiian culture, right? If it weren't for the missionaries that learned to speak pure Hawaiian and do the things they did for them, they built schools, mm -hmm. taught them, educated them. Right. But the whaling people, that culture that was to take they were here to take things. Absolutely. And um, they Absolutely. were trading with the native people for food and water, those kinds of things. Absolutely. But their main mission was to take and, and to... Uh, but the whaling industry yeah. sort of died out. And yeah. then the sugar yes. plantation yeah. community came in, and Koloa is the first. That's right. And you know why? Because the school, the missionaries needed jobs to support. They weren't being supported totally by the missions in... Uh, from New England. From New England. Right. And so they started sugar, and that's how they made a lot of their money. 
Do you know any that. stories about the very beginning of sugar? Why sugar? How did they know that sugar would work? Oh, because um, the kids start. I mean, oh, there's so much to that story. I'm sure. you got to read about it. Yeah. But sugar was the first that helped them uh, buy stuff and support them. So, but to grow sugar, you need labor. And so the labor, oh. uh, the different immigrations that came here, the Chinese and Japanese and Filipino cultures, they came here, they were brought here, and they brought a whole nother world that your family had to interact with. And what did they do about the language barriers and things with the immigrant people who were working on the plantation? They had to learn English. We were, uh, they were the first generations born here that we went to school with. Right. Yeah. And um, did you speak pigeon at that time? Oh, pure pigeon. <laughs> pure pigeon. Is there such thing as pure pigeon? Oh, <laughs> you stay go and I stay come. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. It was a whole new world. And the plantations, housing was free. Uh -huh. Their medical was free. Everything was free for the workers. I see. So that's what really made them able to make families that's and right. start their, their life here rather than just mm -hmm. finish their contract and go back to where they yeah. came from. Well, they made, the Filipinos made a lot of money, sent it back to the Philippines, the mm -hmm. Filipinos. But the Japanese were different. They wanted to stay here and they... They got off the plantations and had stores and all kinds of stuff. And they their were, value was education and oh, putting their oh, kids through school. Oh, and Those kids just studied, studied, studied and when we, I was uh, going to school. That's all they did. Right. Yeah. And did you have friends of other cultures? Did you have friends that were Filipino and oh, friends that were Japanese? all our friends. Yeah. All, we loved our friends in high school. Yeah. We loved our friends in eighth grade. Yeah. yeah. And you did you play sports and athletics with them and everybody? Uh, no. Well, we were song leaders. That was our sport. Oh. My sister and I were song leaders. leaders. For three years. Yeah. You didn't get Do elected you, the first year. but And what, what kind years. of songs did you lead? Oh, my gosh. On Waimea. Um, Why me? Yeah. Yeah. Why you know, oh yeah, all after, <laughs> after the college songs, we just put Waimea in its place. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that going to school in Michigan and we always would take the Michigan State fight song and put all the words in there. Right? Is that where you grew up? In Michigan, yes. Oh my God. So, but um, these, all this culture coming together, did you know that you were a cultural melting pot? Did you, were you aware of that? No, I just knew everybody loved everybody. Mm -hmm. I, 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 yeah, I just thought this is life. If I go to the mainland, I'm going to get in with all kinds of people. You right. Know? Yeah. So, did it, you experience you know, kind of the a prejudice or a, no? These people stay over there. That no. kind of thing. You never experienced that. No, except they knew they couldn't date us. That was, you know, you just didn't date. Mm -hmm. At that, at that, in in ninety year, ninety one years ago, you know. Yeah, yeah. culturally different norms there, were, well, yeah. were there. They yeah. had just come to Hawaii and they worked in the fields and right. They were maids and did things. So mm -hmm. yeah. Um, my uh, first church here in Hanapepe, Hanapepe um, United Church of Christ. Many of those people were Japanese Nisei people oh, of yes. your generation. And uh, some of them told me stories of be, be, de, being domestic help. And they yes. told me stories of how there was a prejudice against them during World War II from the American FBI, you know, the... Well, yes, because they thing. didn't know whether they were on the island ready to right. bomb us off. Right. The face of the so earth. So there was, there was a yeah. fear thing that happened. Oh, absolutely. And uh, so everything was always being sorted out. Do you remember your parents having particular ideas about the immigration that was happening or the success of the plantation based on the... Different? Well, 
No, I, I don't know how they felt, but all I know is that somebody did kill my dad's dog. We found it up in the reservoir. Tell after. me that story. Well, he had a, a dog. In fact, on my first playhouse was the doghouse, Oscar. Oh. And he followed Daddy everywhere, Scotch Terrier. And the next day after Pearl Harbor, Oscar was found dead up in the reservoir. But that's the only thing that we were aware of. Otherwise, they were still our friends. Yeah. Yeah, you know, a lot of times those stories are just not retold. I remember with interviewing people from my yeah. church. It's just, we don't need to go there. We don't need to tell that story yeah. again. And somebody could have run over him. Sure. You know, but that's, no. Yeah. Otherwise, there was no feeling. But how sad we were that, that that happened. You know, Bobby, I'm really impressed by how much you and your family love this island. Oh, my, <laughs> oh my goodness. And you seem to always, oh. when you leave this island, you have this magnetic oh. thing where you want to come back. Well, you know, if times? I saw anybody in a Aloha shirt, I'd say... <gasps> Are you from Hawaii? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, right. Oh my right. God, I was so homesick. Right, yeah. I Especially think. in New York. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, what was it like your first winter? Was that a oh, special time? Oh, it was special. <laughs> oh my God. Well, kids took me home on weekends to the day students. And uh -huh. so I got, I went to Poughkeepsie and oh, yeah, I saw a lot of Mm -hmm. wonderful things, mm -hmm. their homes and how they what lived. What do you feel is, I mean, you know, we're talking about your family historically with their, what they've given to Kauai. What do you think is their greatest thing that your family has <gasps> given to the island? Oh. Um, what about, you know, the Smith Waterhouse clan? There's so many of you. The missionaries, uh -huh. if you read their stories, what they, they built schools to get the kids that weren't smart in in real school to learn how to fix an engine and all of that. I mean, mm. that's what they did for the kids yeah. of of Hawaiian ancestry. They were so they were um, so they were very concerned about the community as a concerned. whole thing, and saw the where it was weak, uh, building a school and and making it be sort of like a. A trade school or a technical trade school. Trade school is what they built. It's all yeah. in the book. Yeah. Beautiful buildings right. that they built to educate the kids. What would you like to see um, your family, how would you like to see your family continue to tell your story? I hope my kids and grandkids and great-grandkids continue to do good yeah. like their ancestors did. There we go. Yep. There, there we, we go. go. In other words, um, oh, yes. a heritage. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well. And, and it's amazing because there were nine kids in my grand, ten, and my grandfather was the oldest, and half of everybody had a college education. Wow. Except one. And that one invented the stop go light. In Pasadena. Oh, my gosh. The stop go light. Yeah, yeah. He invented that. Yeah. It went from Pasadena all the way to Ventura. Wow. The stop go, go light. Yeah, it's all written up in the books, yeah. But, I like this um, idea of giving back yeah. and, you know, uh, continually finding out how you can serve and give back. Well, many of them went on to uh, missionary schools, to mm -hmm. uh, um, I I forget what you call those schools. Seminary. Seminary schools back east, and they all went, ended up in Japan, especially in um, Africa. Mm -hmm. They spent years in Africa, and they'd come home every five years for a year, and then yeah, anyway. So it's still they growing. They their it's, lives. It's still growing. The whole for mission, thing about giving work. is growing. I feel like we could plug the book. And India, too. They went to India, gave a lot of lives in India. Is that information in, to, in the book? Uh, uh, Would you mind holding this book? <laughs> <laughs> sure. And, and let's read the title of this, 100 Years of Healing. Was that a difficult title? No. 
would be my guess. Three generations of doctors in this book. Three generations of, of doctors. doctors. I don't know of book. any family that has that yeah. legacy. And, um, and uh, essentially, this is a genealogy of Smith Waterhouse. It's, it's absolutely, it's a genealogy. Yeah. yeah. And why would somebody want to read this? What's important to you? Well, here? if you like Hawaiian history and you want to know about Hawaiian history, this is one That's of the, the best books. One of the best books It to has get. Every, everything. And it's from the family's point of view, right? My daughter put it all together. Some of the pictures <laughs> are mine. And we had a wonderful girl. Evelyn Cook that wrote it, a, a dear, dear, dear friend. She put it all together. I know Evelyn. Evelyn right, Cook. Oh, yeah. what a! They were very dear to our family. It's She's so gone now. it's so amazing to have your family be uh, um, create such a story and then be able to put it into a book and share the book. I mean, for me, that I wish every family could do that. Well, you know why, though? Letters in trunks. They found all these wonderful, wonderful letters. They wrote back and forth almost every day yeah. to their family right. from here. Right. And, and um, Dr. Smith went back one time to where he was born. And Millicent never left Kauai. She stayed, oh. died here, never went home. I think there were like 11 kids in her family, mm -hmm. and she never went back. She was a true wife, a missionary girl mm -hmm. that loved the Hawaiians. In fact, she was the first one that allowed their kids to play with Hawaiians. I see. The first missionaries that came here 20 years before that right did not allow them because they were very immoral in those days. They didn't wear clothes. They slept with each other. It was just a whole new. And of course, the white men that came over off the boats and the ships went along with all this. Mm -hmm. Nobody cared about the Hawaiians right. until the missionaries came. So two cultures kind of coming together and then trying to decide how to, to create a new society based on what, what was valuable. I want to read it now, that, that part over again, because there were several of those stories where Hawaiian people went to the mainland and they, they were raised and they learned and then they came back to Hawaii and helped their people along the way. Well, they knew the difference. Yeah between how to treat people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Not, I hope and one more, one more itty bitty <laughs> question. Yeah. What do you aspire to in these, these autumn of your lifetimes? I am so happy to be home with my children, grandchildren, great, great grandchildren, and maybe I'll live long enough to see the great, great, great grandchildren. <laughs> this would be a Smith tradition <laughs> yeah. and a Waterhouse tradition, right, and the right. great, 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 great. Right. Well, it's very nice to interview you, Bobby. I think you're a, you're an amazing person, and your story is just barely being told here. Mm -hmm. and, but I think we're we're getting to where um, we should probably bring it to a close. Thank, Thank you. you so much. <laughs> you have been absolutely a joy oh, to help you, me get through this. Thanks for saying that. Take me out of the can, bring me out of the can, me out of the stench, Janakas and jitneys and cans galore, pineapples strewn right and left on the floor, oh please take me out of the Camry, I'm slowly going insane. Oh, they ought to, ought to, ought to, pineapples in this dome.